It's high tide on Papua New Guinea's mighty Sepik River. This enormous expanse of water snakes between thick jungle, connecting many remote traditional villages. If you look closely, you can see the signs of communities that are substantially lifting their living conditions because of their contribution to the country's growing cocoa trade and compounded by the insatiable global appetite for chocolate. People are getting into you know, saving money and putting money down to school fees, out, um, uh, education, especially education. Uh, we are hoping that uh, by end of this year, going next year, most of our farmers will be going into establishing their permanent homes. In the last few years, there's been a major push in this province to produce more cocoa. Now growers are reaping the rewards from greater production and skyrocketing prices. 2024 has marked a global shortage in cocoa, driven by bad weather, disease and deforestation in West Africa, where most cocoa is sourced, this has in turn caused prices to soar. They're at an all-time high, increasing by more than 400% in the last seven years. It's meant villages like this one, Saparu, have for the first time been able to build much needed infrastructure for essential services through their massive cocoa profits. Many here have been able to buy solar panels to access power far from the grid. We have the money now. We can plant our own cocoa and now we have the increase in price, we can start to do what we're supposed to do to improve our livelihood. PNG is a largely resources driven economy, mostly in the form of enormous mining projects. But most residents rely on cash crops to support their households. Before independence, cocoa was grown in large plantations. Now the industry is dominated by family operated businesses on customary land. These cacao trees are in much better shape than they were a decade ago. Many plots were wiped out by a pest, the cocoa pod borer. The government and NGOs have in recent years undertaken major programs to develop and make available clones of the plant that are more pest and disease resistant. In East Sepik province alone, hundreds of nurseries have been set up in recent years to bring seedlings closer to villages. Um, nursery and um, big plant demand, so lost. We will be given. All money not been planting cacao now, like planting cacao. Uh, so big plant demand and nursery. We built about 500 village nurseries so far. So almost every single village has its own nursery, whereas previously we had uh, maybe like just three nurseries in the whole province. So we've got more nurseries, cocoa nurseries in East Sepik than you've got across all of Papua New Guinea. Um, and so we've kind of liberalised the, the industry. Once the wet beans are harvested from these pods, they're taken to fermentaries, which have to be licensed by the National Cocoa Board. They ferment for up to a week, developing the flavour and acidity essential for the final product. Then the beans are dried. Because of PNG's rain in the wet season, this is often done under shelter and above heated kiln pipes. Exporters are encouraging growers to use the opportunity of these high prices to invest in their farms and better equipment at fermentaries to improve quality and maintain high yields in the future. If we can really use this excitement to encourage people to plant cocoa, uh, to be and to manage their farms better, um, and therefore increase the level of production in Papua New Guinea, which will be better in the long run, um, that's that's a big priority for me. Transport, especially, can be expensive and onerous in Papua New Guinea. In remote areas near the Sea Peak, they're battling high tides for months of the year. Here at regional centres like Maprik is where growers cash in. 
All going well, 40,000 tonnes of cocoa beans will be sold to get ready for export this year at trading posts like this one. It's a figure that government and industry desperately want to increase in a bid to raise incomes and improve living standards for those in the provinces. PNG sits just outside of the top 10 largest cocoa growing countries, but it has lofty ambitions to dramatically increase its output. In East Sepik province, its governor has been championing the push to grow more cocoa, but PNG is a long way from filling current supply shortages. So we've got the capability to, to be the largest cocoa producer in this country or in this part of the world. Uh, because the land is there, the labour is there, we just need a bit of investment to get it there and plus we've got to keep up skilling our farmers and that's what we're going to do. From coastal provincial capitals, the cocoa is prepped and shipped mostly to Southeast Asia, where the cocoa is made into semi-finished products to be turned into chocolate. Papua New Guinea is considered a fine flavour cocoa, uh, which means that overseas buyers are buying Papua New Guinea cocoa for its flavour characteristics. The price of chocolate has been climbing and major manufacturers are signalling further price hikes. The trade-off is that growers here are receiving the benefits. Domestic studies have shown that growers receive a large proportion of the final export price of beans. The PNG supply chain is very compressed, meaning that it doesn't take very long for the cocoa to be harvested off the tree, uh, fermented, dried, uh, bought to the exporter and then for the exporter to ship to the customer. Uh, and that means that um, PNG Cocoa arrives at the factory very fresh. I just said I'm all I need money like cacao, all the PM school fees from all beginning. I picked my impact through and cacao and bring me a Felix na community.